Whoa, I just shook the camera. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I gotta get the giggles out. Hi, everyone. I'm Serena Slack. Welcome to my art channel. If you know me and know my work, you know that for the past three years, my medium of choice as a painter has been acrylics. Now, I'm pretty happy with how my skill level has developed in that time, but I'm also starting to get a little bit bored of acrylics and I wanted to start dabbling in watercolor. One of the reasons I've started this channel is to document my process as I sort of spread my wings and expand and flex new muscles and learn new art supplies and experiment with them. And I think that will be much easier to do uh, if I can hold myself accountable by continuing to make and upload videos. I do hope that I can be of some help to other people. Um, if you're interested in my art, then hopefully you enjoy seeing it. And I really want to be able to like document how I progress with using new art materials. And since I'm trying to get into watercolors, that's going to be sort of a main focus for the time being until I pick up acrylics again. And then by that time, I'll start incorporating some of my painting process for um, how, I, how I usually do things in my art studio and show them to you as well. So here's the skinny. I didn't think I had any watercolors until yesterday when I was digging around for something else and I found this 18 pack of, I'm just gonna hold up one of them, it's the Reeves watercolor tubes. There's a, a set of 18 of these and I don't think that these are the best quality paints, but they currently are all I have until the paints that I ordered arrive in the mail. Because I wanted this video to be casual and fun and just whatever I wanted it to be without committing myself to like something commodifiable. I thought that I would do a little art project to make myself a palette and a tin out of a recycled Altoid tin. I used to make quite a bit of projects out of these Altoid tins. I save a lot of these because I am a trash hoarder and I refuse to throw anything away. And I have made like miniatures inside of these and prayer boxes and like whatever you can think of because I love repurposing trash. And I've always wanted to try my hand at making like a little travel watercolor tin. And I think since this is the last Altoid tin that I have in my collection, it's gonna have to be used for that. So the only thing that I've done so far is I washed out this Altoid tin because when I pulled it out of my drawer, it still had sort of sugary mint residue inside. Excuse me, madam, what are you doing? This is my cat Pixel, by the way. You better get used to saying hey to her because she loves being on camera. <laughs> she really wants attention right now. I'm sorry, dear. Maybe a little later. Okay, so as I was saying, there's going to be two, maybe three separate pieces of creating this little project. The first is uh, creating the pans for the inside of the tin. Now there are a few options that I have at my disposal and I haven't yet settled on which I want to do. Uh, the first is I saw someone online saying that you can repurpose um, these like sort of medical slash chewing gum that's in these sort of foil packets where you pop the pills and or gum out and I have these these are like Mucinex tablets, <laughs> and uh, I'm honestly not sure. I don't plan on throwing the medicine away, obviously, but this is pretty much the only thing of that kind that I have in the home, because the goal of this project is to not spend any money. I don't want to purchase anything for this project. I want to use all of the crap that I currently own and do this on the cheap cheap. So that's one option. The second option is to make a polymer clay insert that I can craft my own paint wells inside of. I've seen some pretty clever tricks of people using um, certain household items of a specific size to like stamp inside of polymer clay and make these little trays that you can then insert into the tin. And I actually thought that that was pretty clever. I think I would like to try doing that first and then if for some reason that just does not work out and I can't figure out how to do it, <laughs> I am going to, oh, you can see me and my phone in there. Hello. Um, if for some reason that doesn't work out, I will switch to this and we'll find another place to put the Mucinex. The second part of this project is going to involve making a swatch card that I can custom fit inside the lid, I think. Uh, either that or on top. 
I haven't decided yet, but one way or the other, I'm actually going to make a swatch card for this paint set that I'm making. And I have a laminator somewhere that I'll have to dust off so that I can actually waterproof it. That way it won't get destroyed when I put it in here and carry it around with me. And then the other thing that I'm probably the most excited to do, but it is my lowest priority, is to decorate the outside because that's something that I actually really enjoy. I think that's the order in which I'm going to work on this project. And uh, let's do it. Yeah. My kitty cat is such a mood right now. Oh yeah, Pixel. I'm sleepy too. Bruh, that sun. I just got a call on my phone that was from an unknown number and I answered it like, hello. And I got this woman's voice shouting at me saying, thank you for choosing Marriott Hotels. And I went, I, I, I didn't. I hate spam calls. I get like 20 of them a week. I've got a wad of polymer clay <laughs> in varying colors. I might actually paint over them once they are baked in the oven and hardened. Um, I've got plenty of acrylic paint around. Because ideally you do want your pans to be white. That way you can actually see the pigments. I didn't have enough white. I only had a tiny little bit. And I have an abundance of all of these other kooky colors in polymer clay. So we just work with what we got. Like I said, I didn't want to spend any money on this project. I wanted to be able to make something for myself that I could be proud of just to say I did and that wouldn't cause me too much stress. And these are all things that I happen to really like doing. I really like sculpting things out of clay, upcycling, and I really like <clears throat> fancy containers. <laughs> smoosh, smoosh, smoosh. And I wanted to give myself more polymer clay than I'll probably need because I'm going to have to custom size and cut the the doohickey johnsons but that's the thing gosh do i want to make like separate pans that i can like remove individually or do i want to make just like one big chunky insert there are drawbacks to both of them if i make one giant insert uh, i won't be able to clean the individual wells if there's still paint in some of the other wells which is a pain in the butt if i make separate wells then i'll have to figure out how i can fit them inside the tin without them all falling out every time I open the damn thing because like they're gonna be loose inside there so I'll have to find some way of like sticking them to the inside. There's too many decisions to make. This was supposed to be stress-free and I'm already like <laughs> ah, what do I do? I'm overwhelmed by options. Ah that's an attractive marble ball. All right let's roll it out. Pardon me my sweet. I need to move these things. <laughs> She's like, no! <laughs> you give me this palette. The process of me creating my tray out of the polymer clay required a little bit of trial and error. I scoured my apartment for some sort of object that I could use to stamp the wells, and sure enough, I had a near-empty tube of lip balm, and I just used the cap from that to punch the holes, and it was very satisfying to like press it in there, almost like a tiny little cookie cutter, and the little nubs of polymer clay popped out so beautifully, and it was just very satisfying. Polymer clay is incredibly satisfying to work with and stress reducing. You'll notice that there is a bit of back and forth. This process became challenging particularly because I kept trying to cut out the shape to fit inside the tin first and then punching the holes in it, but then as most people who work with polymer clay will tell you that if you put pressure on the clay, it's probably going to smoosh and create a wider surface area. So by the time I was finished punching in my wells, the shape that I had cut out using the tin didn't actually fit inside of it anymore. So I had to go back to the drawing board and what I did was I pressed the tin into the clay and just cut it out and then put the entire slab inside the tin and then punched out the holes. Unfortunately that meant that I had to narrow down the number of my wells from 12 to 11. Not a very common number for a watercolor set. It's an odd number. 
and it was very odd. <laughs> but I managed to make it work, and I thought that that was the easiest way for me to get even wells, so that they were all the very same size and none of them were warped too much. Here's what it looks like out of the oven. Not too bad. It's starting to cool down too. It's just a tiny bit warm to the touch. For the most part, I think this is gonna work out pretty good. The next step is to paint it white. Okay, so it's late afternoon now. The sun's about to go down. I've been working on this all day and I realized that I made a boo-boo. This is acrylic paint. It's not waterproof and I plan on storing and using a water-based medium in this palette. So now, <laughs> I, I very likely could have just left the polymer clay as is, but I am debating. I have a little bit of this epoxy resin left, which is waterproof, and I am considering mixing up a little bit and trying to very, very carefully add resin to this so that it can stay white and I can still use it as a palette otherwise I have to start all the way over and the thing is if I pour resin into this <laughs> it's resined <laughs> forever um, unless I can you know do something tricky and make another palette to like slide over top of this so this whole project needs to be rethought with careful planning. This kind of trial and error process is very commonplace for me, like especially when I'm doing stuff that I have like very little skill in. <laughs> uh, I refuse to give up. I'm gonna take a nap now, and hopefully by the time I wake up, I'll have uh, been feeling a little bit more refreshed and can think of something that will be a solution to my, my problem here. Hmm. Alrighty, so I put the resin, a coat of the resin, on the pan that I made, and that is sitting on top of my fridge. It's going to take 24 hours to harden, so I'm just sort of keeping it out of the way until tomorrow afternoon when I can go check on it. In the meantime, I have been doing some swatching. I have made up some sample cards, and I kind of narrowed down my choices for the color palette that I want to include in this set. And I ultimately had planned on doing this palette, which included white. And then I was like, hmm, that's a neat idea, but, you know, what happens if I include black? Well, I tried to include black and get rid of the Viridian color, and I ended up hating this almost as soon as I put it down. I was like, no, <laughs> why did I do that? I can mix black that looks exactly like this with two of the colors that are already in the set that I'm using, so why would I include it? So I went back to the Viridian and then sort of considering it, I was like, hmm, maybe this isn't the best possible mixing palette. I really enjoy purple. It's my favorite color, so I don't know why I'm not including it. So I replaced white with purple and then this is the final palette that I have chosen. Okay, so yeah, we will do the swatch card tomorrow, lamination and trimming if required, and then we will decorate the outside of the palette and make it look pretty, and then we can put the paints inside it, and then this project can be called complete. It's morning, and I didn't have the patience to wait until this afternoon. I ran into the kitchen this morning and checked on my palette to see how it was doing, and it's actually pretty hardened up. I added glitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's still white, um, so it still serves the purpose and the function that I need it to, but now it's just extra pretty. <laughs> Doing this has, of course, limited me now because I can't remove it from the tin, but I don't think I had that option anyway just because of how I had to bake this piece of polymer clay into it. Um, I don't think I could have removed it without breaking it anyhow, so now that it's waterproof, I'll be able to rinse it out and put other paints in there if I want to. And then the only other thing I did this morning was I trimmed uh, this swatch card that I had made. It was a little too big to fit inside the lid, and I have to allow for like maybe a small border of laminate so that it'll fit inside. And then later today, since this is, you know, pretty much drying now and almost dry, I can actually decorate the outside of it and customize it and make it gorgeous. 
When it came to decorating the lid of this tin, I first had to sand the enamel paint that was on it. Um, I just used a sanding block and I was wearing a mask while I was doing this. You don't want to breathe in those particles of paint. <laughs> And then I began painting it purple. As I said, it's my favorite color, so why wouldn't a customized watercolor tin not be my favorite color? Then it was time to add the paint into the wells. The resin had dried enough that I was comfortable doing that. And since I was doing nothing else with the tin itself, I could safely do that so that the paint had time enough to dry. I decided I wanted the lid to actually have a painting on it, and I wanted it to be a painting that I did using this actual watercolor set. Um, it's my first time using it since I bought it uh, all those years ago, and I knew I wanted it to be purple to match the color of the border on that lid that I had painted. So I scoured my phone for a photograph, and I had taken this beautiful image of the view outside of my window. I live right by a river, and there was this gorgeous sunset one night and I just pointed my camera outside of the window onto the street near the river where the sun was sort of reflecting off the water and that's what this little sketch is. The only thing I eliminated was the appearance of the cars on the street. It was just too tiny for me to sketch in <laughs> and uh, I gave myself a little artistic license in a few areas. I learned that Watercolors are going to be a unique challenge for me because I have to get myself out of acrylic brain where I'm so used to, if I make a mistake, where I can cover it up with other layers of paint. That's just not the way that watercolors work. And I do need to learn a little bit of patience so that my layers can dry before I start adding more color. There was a lot of bleeding action going on. <laughs> and that's just something that I'm gonna have to gradually get better at. I do want to apologize for the goofy camera angle. I did film this video on my phone and I just have this tiny little rickety plastic tripod that I put it on. I was practically bumping it while I was painting this picture. And at last, the final step, running my swatch card through the laminator, as well as the painting that was going on the lid, and something else that I needed to laminate just to fill up the sheet. And here is the reveal of the final product. These paints are stinky. <laughs> and now that they're drying a little bit, they smell a little less noxious, but they still smell like, I don't know, a combination of mothballs and crusty old factory and just whatever it is that they smell like, they don't smell very nice. So I'm very happy with the finished product here. I think it turned out really great. Um, my swatch card, which has been laminated and stuck inside. I had a bit of a snag with that only because my laminator didn't like the thickness of my watercolor paper. So I ended up having to do something rather dangerous and take a lighter and sort of burn around the edges so that it wouldn't peel up on the sides. I can't recommend doing that, but I'm just letting you know that that's what I did. So it actually, it fits better in here now than it initially did when I first cut it out and I had to work around it a little bit. That part probably wasn't 100% necessary, but I'm glad I did it anyway. That'll prevent it from getting like splattered with paint water or otherwise compromised. And everything in here is just so shiny now. <laughs> And then I'm, of course, very happy with how the top came out. I could have bedazzled this entire thing and really gone ham with it, but instead I just decided to keep it rather simple, and I think it came out rather attractive. I put a little varnish on the outside where the acrylic paint is, that way it won't stay tacky and it'll harden. Varnish is good for acrylic paint because it gets very dusty. 
It looks simple but beautiful, and I'm very proud of my miniature watercolor painting. It came out as good as I could expect it to. <laughs> I just look so tired. Thank you everybody for coming along on this journey with me. My floor is a right mess now, and I'll be getting to cleaning that here very shortly. Um, you know, it was a fun project. It only took me about two days. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay though. I had fun while I did it, and you can probably expect more sort of upcycling activities from me in the future, and definitely some watercolor painting, so I'll be sure to update you on those as I go along with them. This has been fun. Thanks again for everyone watching. If you're interested in seeing the art that I've already accomplished with my acrylic work, you can visit my Facebook and Instagram pages. I will put them in the description below. Fair warning to everyone that there are the occasional mature themes in my work. Some of it is a little dark, others very emotional, and you may occasionally see a bear lady, if you understand my meaning. Just wanted to put that out there so that people can make informed decisions whether or not they want to go and observe my work. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm gonna sign off now and I will see you in my next video. Ciao.